Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to tonight's story time. If you could, bow your heads and close your eyes. We're about to pray before we get into tonight's story time. Lord, thank you for this amazing day today. We ask that as we read this story tonight, that we are able to receive a message from you. Thank you for our families, thank you for our friends, and thank you for the children who are listening. We ask that you bless them and continue to bless the community. In Jesus' name, amen. Hair Love, written by Matthew A. Cherry, illustrated by Vashti Harrison. My name is Zuri, and I have hair that has a mind of its own. It kinks, coils, and curls every which way. Daddy tells me it is beautiful. That makes me proud. I love that my hair lets me be me. In funky braids with beads, I am a princess. And when my hair is in two puffs, I am above the clouds like a superhero. My hair even does magic tricks. One day, Rocky and I were playing outside when along came the rain. From large to small it went, presto, just like that. There is nothing my hair can't do. Today I woke up extra early all by myself. I was too excited to sleep. It's a big day. Daddy was still sleeping. Shh, I said to Rocky as we tiptoed past him. Lately, Daddy has been worn out. He makes me breakfast, takes me to school, goes to work, picks me up, and yesterday we went for a bike ride around the park. I think he needs a break. Because today is special, I want a perfect hairstyle. This calls for a professional's touch. Paws off, Rocky. Daddy heard the crash. Zuri, what on earth? He asked. I was only trying to help, I said. Daddy smiled. Can I help too? It'll be a piece of cake, Zuzu. The first style was a big no way. The second was no better. No, Daddy. Then Daddy tried slicking my hair back into two puffs. Ouch, Daddy yelled. Wait a minute, Daddy said as he reached into the drawer and pulled out a pick. Ta-da! Daddy, really? I said. I'll be right back, he promised. Now, how's that, he asked, pulling a hat down over my eyes. Daddy, come on, we can do better than that. I really need my hair to be special. Don't worry, he said, we'll figure this out. Then I had a great idea. Daddy gathered all the tools we needed and we were set. Watching carefully, Daddy combed, parted, oiled, and twisted. He nailed it. Funky puff buns, pretty, pretty, and so much fun. Rocky approved too. I put on my superhero cape as the final touch to a perfect look. Where's my Zuzu? Mommy called from the door. She could not get in the house fast enough. Mommy! You've got to be the prettiest supergirl I have ever seen, she said. And your hair is beautiful, Zuri. Who did it? I looked at Daddy and beamed. Mommy smiled. Very nice. Thank you. We learned from the best, Daddy said as he gave her a big hug. My hair is mommy, daddy, and me. It's hair love. The end. Walt Disney's Mickey Meets the Giant. Once upon a time, there lived a brave woodcutter named Mickey. His work took him from place to place. One day, he came to a pretty town. It was called Cedar Grove. These hills are just full of sweet smelling trees, he thought. I can sell that wood. I'll make a lot of money. But first, I must be sure my ax is sharp. So the woodcutter walked through the streets of the town. There were many people in the street. Everyone looked very upset. Whatever will happen to us, one woman cried. We must find someone who can beat the giant, yelled the man. Why is everyone so afraid of this giant? What has he done? asked Mickey. The people told him about a night when the giant decided to have a little fun. 
While they lay sleeping, the giants began to whistle. When he whistled, the wind blew. He whistled through their windows. The wind blew through their homes. It blew all the sleeping people right out of their beds. Mickey didn't like that story very much, and he didn't like the next one at all. One day, the giant wanted to play. He jumped rope in the fields. They had just been planted. He made footprints all over the fields. That night, it rained. The next day, the fields were covered with foot-shaped lakes. When the giant saw his footprints filled with water, he began to laugh. He laughed so hard that he fell down. He rolled on the ground. He laughed some more. Everything from miles around shook as he laughed. This was too much for the animals in the forest. They were so afraid that they ran for their lives. Now, there are no animals in Cedar Grove, said the giant, and soon there will be no people. Ho, ho. What a terrible giant, thought Mickey. Just then, a wagon came racing into town. It stopped. The driver jumped to the ground. He told Mickey his story. I was taking my family away from Cedar Grove, but a huge boulder rolled right onto the road. It was so big, there was no way around it. I looked up to see where it came from. There stood the giant. The giant laughed very hard when he saw that I was afraid. His laugh was as loud as thunder. My horse was so scared that he turned right around. He ran as fast as he could back here to Cedar Grove. The giant had blocked the only way out of town. Now the people of Cedar Grove were trapped. The brave woodcutter had heard enough. Let me face the giant, he said. I have beaten bullies before. I'll do it again. Everyone laughed at the woodcutter. You could not beat this giant, said a kind policeman, but I do think you must be a very brave young man. Stan Doolittle is the man to do this, said the policeman. I remember the time that Stan ran a mean old bear out of Cedar Grove. Stan stepped to the front. I will show the giant who is boss, he said. But it was not long before Stan came running home. He was dripping wet and he was very upset. The giant had picked up poor Stan by his head and he had dropped Stan right into a cup of tea. So the people called a town meeting this time, they picked the tallest man in Cedar Grove to challenge the giant. But Tall Tom was not a brave man. He did not want to meet the giant. But at last, off he went. Before the townspeople could count to three, Tall Tom came running back. I just saw the giant break the tallest tree in the forest in two pieces, he cried. I did not want that to happen to me. The people in the town did not know what to do next. That does it. I am going to beat that giant, said Mickey. I may be small, but I am not afraid. Before I go, I'll need three things. I'll need a bag. I'll need a drinking straw, and I'll need the whitest, roundest cheese in town. I have a plan. The people wondered what the woodcutter wanted with such things, but they gave him what he asked for. Then they told him how to fight the giant. When the woodcutter got to the giant's cave, he looked everywhere but he could not find the giant. 
So he walked into the deep, dark cave. There he found bats and rats, but there was no sign of the giant. The woodcutter decided to wait for the giant. He hopped onto a rock outside the cave. Just then, the rock began to shake. Woo! What is going on here? cried Mickey. Ho, ho, ho! Came a rumbling noise from above. The woodcutter looked up and up. Oh, I see, Mickey said. You must be the giant. Well, I am very glad to meet you, said Mickey. You mean you are not afraid of me, asked the giant. Afraid of you? Why, I am here to challenge you, said Mickey. Ho, 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 thundered the giant. Bigger men than you have tried to beat me. They have failed. I'll just have to show you how strong I am. Watch this, roared the giant. Then he wrapped his huge hand around the widest tree in the forest. He pulled it up as if it were a carrot from a garden. In this, he said. Then he pounded his huge hand on the ground. The ground came apart. It became a deep, long canyon. Now it's my turn, said Mickey to the giant. Watch how far I can blow this leaf. A leaf, yelled the giant. I could blow down 50 trees with one breath. And the giant took a deep breath. Whoosh! There lay 50 trees on the forest floor. Mickey now knew his plan would work. Not bad, he told the giant. Now it is my turn. Watch how far I throw this stone. That is just a pebble, said the giant. Step aside. The giant bent down to pick up a boulder. That is such a tiny rock, cried Mickey. Why not throw the one over there? Mickey pointed to the very boulder that was blocking the road to Cedar Grove. The giant gathered all his strength. He threw that boulder far, far away. And now the road was not blocked. My plan is working better than I had hoped, Mickey thought. He reached into his bag. He pulled out the straw. Watch this, he said to the giant. I'm going to drink all the water in this pond. Straws and ponds are for weaklings, said the giant. I can drink a lake. Can you drink all those foot-shaped lakes in the planting fields, asked Mickey. Watch me, said the giant. And with that, he drank all the water in each and every lake. Now the giant was tired and he was so full of water that he was about to burst. Here's an easy one for you, said Mickey. How much water can you squeeze from a stone? The giant picked up a stone. He squeezed it as hard as he could, but no water came from the stone. What kind of giant are you, asked Mickey. He held up the round white cheese. See this stone? Watch this. Then he squeezed and squeezed. Water ran from the cheese. The giant's eyes grew big with fear. And if you don't leave Cedar Grove that once said Mickey while I'll... The giant turned and ran. Mickey smiled to himself. His plan had worked. He had stood up to the giant and 
he made the giant put right all the wrong things he had done. Quickly, he went back to town. He told the people what he had done. They cheered Mickey for his courage. He became the hero of the town. From that time on, the people of Cedar Grove lived in peace and the giant was never heard from again. The end. Let us pray. Lord, we come back again thanking you for this amazing evening. Thank you for this powerful lesson in this story. Thank you for everything that you're teaching us. And thank you for all the opportunities that you are giving us through literacy. We ask that you continue to bless our family, our friends, bless the children who are listening tonight. Bless those who will continue to listen to our read-alongs as we go through this journey. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.